Wow. That's it right there, guys. Holy. We're getting this thing dialed in real good now. What's going on guys? Welcome back. My name is Brandon. We've got a fun episode today. I'm going to be cutting some wood with my evolution table saw and then right after that we're going to be cutting some aluminum pieces and then right after that we're going to be welding them up with my Yes Welder MIG Pro 250. We're going to try to get those settings on that welder dialed right in. So if you guys have one of these Yes Welders and you're trying to get it dialed in, this should be a good guide to get you up and running real quick with some basic settings. Let's get going. going keep going keep going right there push that lever right there go ahead let off yep and watch this magic how is cool is that Good. now we're going to cut our wood for our project it's, it's like be super loud. yeah that's why you're going to put ear earphones on okay. we always have to put earphones on right okay. so whose are these mine yeah, because we got to save our he ears, right? Yeah. Do you have goggles? Mm-mm. You sure about that? I think there's a pair down here that's got your name on it. What's that say? Colton's goggles? What color do you want? Um, this color. Okay. You can do a dance for me? Can you do a dance for Nate? <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. You have something, aren't you, Colton? There's the incident yeah. in, the, in the workshop. Okay, take this off. Safety is very important in the workshop, isn't it? Yes. Safety first. I tell all my viewers we got to be safe because we only got one set of eyes and ears, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Now we do a little dance right after we get all tooled up with our stuff. There you go. Hey. <laughs> You're not... Because, yeah, you're not. <laughs> so, we've just got a little portable shop back here, and we're just going to stick the end of it on it to help keep some of the sawdust out of the shop. That cut up for a combination blade. That's pretty impressive. That is. Wow. Tell you what guys, I'm really impressed with how this saw cuts. Uh, it's pretty amazing that it cuts wood this well. I'm actually kind of surprised. Uh, figuring that it does, it's not a real high tooth count. Most blades that have a real high tooth count will cut wood uh, very well and smoothly. But I mean look at the, I mean look at this, there's no like blowout, nothing. It just, it cuts it really good. So. Uh, it probably, I don't know how it will cut wood after you cut metal with it for a while, but uh, we'll find that out too. We'll test that. Yeah, and you guys can see how this little sliding compounds uh, part of this table, this bed, is pretty slick too. So kind of while I got you zoomed in, you can see I just, uh, you know, back this off here and just slide this under, kind of line it up to where, it, you know, sighting down the blade. Looking down the blade is to where that's going to cut and holding the wood against this fence and snugging this down. Well, let's give it a whirl. I'll turn the vacuum back on. Check that out, guys. Like I said guys, the thing I really like about this saw is that it just puts away nice. It just easy, you know. I'm all about convenience and doing things the easy way. So, 
that locks into place there. There's just one knob here. That's that. That's all there's to it, guys. I mean, it's that easy. Okay, yep, go ahead. Okay. Okay, keep going, go ahead. There you go. What are we doing now, buddy? Take it. Woohoo! And if you gotta use two hands, go ahead and do that too. Good job, buddy. Mama's gonna love you this. Hey, oh, there you go. Your mama taught you that. Your mama's pretty smart. What the men do, Colton, when they get something on their finger? Yeah. Watch. See that? Yeah. Now what you do? <laughs> don't tell your mama this. You stick your hand in your pocket, and then you rub your paint off in, inside your pocket so it doesn't stain your clothes. Yeah. Nice. Then nobody knows. So that explains a lot when I do Papa's laundry. <laughs> Hmm. Oh. oh, oh, that's that's good. Yeah, that's, that's really good. That's saturated. Good job. So Sorry. when you have black paint all inside your pocket, and Mama asks, what are you going to tell her? I don't know. You're going to say, Papa showed me that? Mm-hmm. No, you tell her that Nana showed you that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Tell us, Papa. Let me know it. Do you smell it? It's glue. I know. We don't eat this stuff though. Give yeah. me, give, I think it might give you a tummy ache. Yeah. Okay. And who's this? Mm, I don't know. Who do you think it is? I don't know. Do you think it's your sister or do you think it's you? It's me. You think that's you? Does it look like you? I say so. You think so? No. Who is this? You don't know who that is? That's your baby sister inside your mommy's belly. This helps seals it. Why? So it doesn't come off. You want to help me with the other picture? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm almost done this one. Then we got to let it dry nice and good. Okay? Okay. And then we're going to seal it with a spray paint. Why? So it stays like this forever. Can I touch it? You can touch it. It's just, it just might be sticky. Oh, yeah, I guess it does. Now, what do you do with your sticky hands? Where do you put them? Papa, <laughs> guys, our habits. That's a pretty fancy haircut Papa. you got there for it. See, oh, for Colton? Okay, now you're just going to take it and you're going to brush it back and forth. Yeah. Wipe it off in your pocket, bud. Don't. That's good. He's a quick yeah. learner. So I got these all glued on guys. Now what this is, what you're looking at here, is that my daughter is currently pregnant and this is my grandson Colton, the one that you see riding the um, the four-wheeler in some of the videos. <laughs> they look almost like identical twins when they were that age. So um, once this is all glued on, then I just went and took a razor blade and just made sure to trim the edges, any overhang, um, trim that off. And um, as you saw her, you know, she put that glue, hodgepodge, modge stuff, whatever it is. And now all I do is just throw on a fast drying polyurethane over all of it, cover everything. Just do a couple quick coats that seals it all in. Uh, and then my wife will take like some sort of ribbon and connect it from these little eye hooks. Then it can hang off uh, the center. So it's just kind of a little decoration. I'll start with the back first. So now we know it cuts wood pretty good. Let's see how it cuts aluminum. It's measuring out to be 10 gauge. Now 10 gauge is 134,000. So it's a little bit thicker than eighth inch. And you can see I've checked this edge, this edge, and this edge are parallel to one another. But you can see this edge over here uh, is kind of all ratty. So I'm going to use this sliding table piece and we're going to true up this edge a little bit. And then that'll give us 
uh, like an aluminum coupon that we can weld on. One of the first things I want to do is set my blade height so it's not overly tall sticking through the material. Yeah, something like that. Now I'm just going to set this to roughly how much I want to take off it, which isn't a lot. We'll go just enough to true it up. Maybe I'll take off like an inch and a half, that way it'll give us a decent coupon. Then I'll snug down our clamp, our hold down clamp. You definitely want eye and ear protection when doing this, it's going to be loud. Look at that guy's nice burr-free edge, perfectly square, looks great. I'll tell you what guys, for the money, this saw is incredible. And I'm sure you could probably buy this blade, and I'll have a link to it, and you could rig it up to your existing table saw if you already have one and still be able to cut aluminum and be able to cut wood and steel. But the one thing that I really like about this table saw, for one, is that it's in the super affordable range, and I just really love that cross-cut sled. That's a huge feature for me, and I love that it folds up compact without it's easy. You don't have to mess around. Press one button and it just folds up. It's just super simple. I like the simplicity of it and I like how well it works. So now that we've got our aluminum pieces, let's work on getting that welder dialed in for some optimum settings. So one of the first things I like to do guys is clean up my work surface because it's really important that when you weld aluminum that it be super clean. So you don't want to get your aluminum pieces all cleaned up and then set them on your table that has contaminants all over it. Just take a little bit of acetone and then just wipe down my work surface. Get the grease and grime off the top of my table. That's all I'm looking to do. Any, you know, anti-spatter that I might have put on it uh, from projects before this. And you can see, look how filthy that is, guys. That thing is terrible. So that grunge and grime would have transferred over back onto our clean aluminum pieces, and we don't want that. So now we got our table clean. Now we just want to wipe down our aluminum, just to get off any fingerprints and grease, oil. You'll see that this will be black when, when I'm done here. I'm going to do both sides, just because I don't really know what we're doing. Look at that. You see how dirty that is? That's just from oils and contaminants. And you want to get that off the aluminum. Next thing we want to do is we got to remove this hard oxide layer. There's a hard oxide layer that's on top of this. Basically like a film. It's kind of like mill scale is to steel. Uh, this oxide layer melts though at like twice the temperature as the aluminum melts. So it's important to remove this so that you can get a good weld. And the way you do that is you use a wire brush, a stainless steel wire brush, and you only use it on aluminum so you don't put contaminants in. That's why it says aluminum on it. And the proper way to do it is when you scrape it, just do it in one direction so you're not kneading the oxide layer back into the aluminum. Just go one direction and that's, that's the proper way to do it. So now I'm just going to go over the setup with you real quick guys. Now if you want to know a detailed guide on all the features and all the uh, settings that this has, I'll have a link up above. And I'll put a link down in the video description too, but I just kind of want to get you up to speed so that you don't have to watch another video to figure out what I'm working with. So I've got 045 wire, it's Fronius 5356, it's 364 or 1.2. Those are the specs on the wire. I went over in that last video on how to set up wire tension for this, how to put in the graphene liner and properly feed that. And we talked about all the settings on the faceplate and what they do. When you MIG weld aluminum, you want to be on DC electrode positive, which we are, and you run 100% straight argon gas. We will turn that on right now. Crack it gently. And we'll run about 30 CFH of, of gas. 
I'll just pull the trigger, see what I'm running for CFH. Looks to be about 30, 31, right around there. That looks good. And you can see with this one, you read the gauge with the center of the ball. Now I know this is loud, guys, but I'm going to go over these modes with you real quick. We're in synergic mode right now. That's stick welding. These are all the processes this will do. That's TIG welding. And that is manual mode. That's what we're going to be in today. Then, but like I said, this is a full synergic machine, meaning that if you set, you know, one of the parameters, you know, for instance, amperage, then it will automatically set your voltage and your wire feed speed. And you pick your material, so that's ferrous metal running on straight CO2. That's C25 gas with ferrous metals, ferrous metal being, you know, steel. Or stainless steel using 100% argon. Next one is flux core, and next one is aluminum. So that's what we're doing. So we're set on aluminum. For wire size, you can pick 045 for aluminum or 035. We're using 045. So we're gonna be in manual mode. We're gonna set our voltage. That's your wire feed speed. Let's put that down to about, let's say, let's try eight for wire feed and for voltage let's go we want to be up right around the 21 range because we want to be in that spray transfer mode let's do like uh, 21.5 so that'll be up in that spray transfer area now when I say spray transfer that's when you want to hear like a solid hissing it wants to sound like tss, not your typical crack and pop that you hear that sounds like bacon when you're doing short circuit mig 21 volts in that area is going to get you up into that spray transfer burns a lot hotter. I think we're getting this thing dialed in and the way to get really good at anything is just practice 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 and we put down a ton of practice speeds just messing around with this uh, in last week's episode and we are up into that spray transfer mode now guys I'm at 22.8 volts and again that's with 045 wire and it seems to be working good so I just padded a few beads onto this and now I'm going to try it onto this thinner plate. This is actually eighth inch. This isn't uh, those coupons that we uh, did already. But I want to try it on this. It might blow through. I mean, that's pretty high. So we'll try it. It's 22.8 volts right there. Now, listen to the difference when you hear this, guys, when I'm welded on this. You'll hear that hissing sound. It's going to sound like a high-pitched hiss. It's not going to sound like that typical frying bacon sound. Uh, when you're doing uh, short circuit MIG or just you know when you're doing MIG so and to just recap guys From your contact tip to the work piece you're about three quarters to one inch away You don't hold it real close like you do with MIG. You want to Push with this uh, that way you get better coverage gas onto your material I'm going to be going from right to left and exaggerate it real steep, but if that's my work piece That's the way I'm going you want to be about 10 15 degrees push all right, now listen to it. You'll hear the sound. Now you have to travel really fast with this uh, so you don't burn through. But did you hear that whining sound, guys? Yeah, that's hot. Look how deep that penetration is, guys. It's actually like going right through it. Let me try lowering the voltage just a little bit. We'll do a combination of two things. We'll do about uh, 21.8 and see if that helps. It seemed to help, but it's still too hot. Oh yeah, that works so much better on thicker material, guys. I think that 045 is just too much. 
for the thinner, you know, eight inch stuff. So while I was messing around with these settings on this machine, guys, I actually had some pretty bad burn back. You can take a look right here, and what that is, is that has fused the aluminum wire inside the contact tip. And I didn't have any more 45 thousandths contact tips. So I took one as an example for length and brought it to my local welding supply store. And I'm happy to say they had the exact same replacement in stock. I got a pack of 10, so if you guys are looking for a 045 contact tip uh, for your Yes Welder, and it's, you know, you're in a pinch and it's on a weekend or whatever, and you can't wait to order them from Yes Welder, this is the exact model. So what I did was, is I took a smaller contact tip uh, that came with, I think this might be like a 35 thousandths, and brought that with me to match up. And here is the replacement, the one closest to us right now. So there's the closest replacement for 045. I'm sorry, this one says it's 40 thousandths, that's the one for the Yes Welder. This one is 45 thousandths, and it is the exact same length, which is what's important because you want your contact tip to work distance uh, to remain the same. Uh, it's just a little bit bigger in diameter, so it might uh, disperse heat better, I don't know, but it's a little bit bigger. But here is the product number uh, if you need to replace yours, 045, and came to 22 bucks. so for a pack of 10. Figured I'd share that with you guys because that's some uh, valuable information if you burn up your contact tips, and Matheson is all over the United States. They're everywhere. And I'll just thread the new contact tip in that I got from Matheson, and we will be back in business. All right, let's get going again. Wow. That's it right there, guys. Holy. We're getting this thing dialed in real good now. Probably hard to hear me because I'm wearing a respirator, but we're at 23 amps, 9.1 for the speed. Yep, that's it guys. Wow. Check this out. I had a little bobble right here where my hand actually hit the uh, hit this clamp right here, but that's okay. Yeah, this thing's getting dialed in pretty good. I got to work on just terminating it a little bit, and that is 23 volts and 10 on the wire feed speed. That's coming together real good. That's that's the sweet spot, guys. So you get yourself up above 21 volts in manual mode, then just start playing with the speed. And that's, that's going to be your best bet to get really good welds out of this. I'm going to practice here for a few more minutes, but yeah, uh, it's only going to get better from here. So yeah guys, I'm really happy how this thing started coming around once it was in manual mode. From what I can tell is on the aluminum, you're probably just better off uh, going into the manual mode and just playing with everything. Start your voltage at 21 volts and work your way up from there anywhere between you know 21 to 25 on material this thick and then just play around with your travel speeds. Um, so this was the machine set on 10, this is 11, this is 12. So you can see how um, going on 12, it made the bead a little bit thinner, but I was traveling a little bit faster too. And this is respectable here. I had a little divot right here because I bumped into the clamp. But anyways, yeah, uh, 
definitely a capable welder and I'm real happy with everything so far but I just think the synergic feature maybe on this welder at least as far as the aluminum part goes um, I had some difficulty with it it seemed to put the uh, voltage a little too low uh, or the amperage and the settings just seemed to be off a little bit so Personally, I would go with the manual settings if you're doing aluminum, and uh, we will continue to do some more experimenting with this, but on the bare wire, the Synergic mode seemed to work great, and that's what I use uh, for that Fronius all the time. I, Right out of the box, that has awesome settings on Synergic mode. This one seemed to do really good as well on Synergic mode with bare wire so we'll have to do some testing on this using some flux coil wire in next week's episode so be sure to stick around for that and that's all there is to it guys i want to thank you for watching thank you guys for tuning in if you're wondering about any of the tools that you see me using i'll have links down below in the description if you're wondering what i'm working on before it makes it up to youtube you guys can catch me on facebook and on instagram i'll have links down below for that new videos every friday so until next week guys i will see you then take care stay safe please like comment subscribe come, come.